Hello gents, welcome to our last video on acids and bases. Today we're going to talk about neutralizing acids and bases. This is when acids and bases react together. So when acids and bases react together, we the, the H plus and the OH minus ions react to form water. Something we've talked about a little bit before, but here's it in more specific, term, specific terms. After water is formed, the remaining ions form a salt. This process of acid and bases reacting together to form water and a salt is called neutralization. Because water forms the solution is said to be neutral. Because water is forming, the solution is said to be neutral at the end. Here's an example. Hydrochloric acid in aqueous solution reacts with sodium hydroxide, our base in aqueous solution, producing water I write it like this because we're thinking about the H and the OH coming together, which is H2O, and NaCl, which is a salt. When we say salt, I'm talking general salts, meaning a metal ion and a non-metal anion coming together. That is a salt. Here's the bread and butter of what's really happening down here. So the neutralization portion is my H plus reacting with my OH minus, forming something that is neutral, water. So acidic plus basic forming neutral compound, pH of seven, which is water. Indicators are often used to identify or indicate with a color change, of course, when neutralization is actually occurring. The point at which an indicator changes colors is called our end point. So let's look at a situation where this is actually applicable. In science, chemists often use neutralization in order to determine the concentration of a solution of an acid or a base. So usually there's some unknown solution out there. So let's say that I have some acid that has some concentration of H+, but I don't know what that concentration is. I just know it's a concentrated acid. And here I have a, a base containing OH-, of course, and I do know that concentration. Right now, we're not going to deal with numbers, we'll just deal with the concepts. I do know the concentration of that base. So, in order to figure this concentration out, what I'm going to do is this procedure. I'm going to take my acid that has an unknown concentration, and I'm going to add it to my base. But there's an indicator in here somewhere. I'm going to keep adding it to my base, little by little by little by little, until my solution becomes neutral. This solution here. As I add my, bait, my, add my acid into my base, acid-base reaction, eventually I'm going to hit a point of neutrality, the neutralization point, the end point. The end point is going to be indicated by an indicator. So the solution will turn pink, usually, for if phenolphthalein is involved. This experiment is called titration. This process is called a titration, adding an acid to a base or a base to an acid, to figure out the unknown concentration of either or. Something else that chemists use in science dealing with <clears throat> acids and bases is something called a buffer. A buffer is a tool that chemists use in order to control the pH of a reaction, essentially. So let's read this out. Oftentimes, chemists want to use acids and bases for different procedures in the laboratory. Very common but they want to avoid large changes in pH. To avoid these large changes, chemists use something called a buffer. A buffer is a solution that resists changes when a small amount of acid or base is used. So I can put a little bit of acid and a little bit of base in, and the pH won't really move much because I have a buffer in place. An example of a natural buffer is our blood. Our blood is a natural buffer which maintains a pH of, or at, 7.4. In all cases, essentially a good buffer will absorb small quantities of acid or small quantities of base and have a very little change in the pH, thus maintaining almost a constant pH throughout your entire experiment, thus creating optimal conditions for whatever that chemist is trying to do. Gentlemen, take these notes. This is your video number four. Adios.